So, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to a new feature called Fitbook Meets. Over time, we're going to get some of our members in and find out a bit more about them. Today, though, we've got Thomas Hackett, Fitbook founder and creator, but also was a successful PT in his time. A lot of qualifications and whatnot there. We're going to find out a bit more what he'd done as a PT. So, do you think it's with your experience to become a PT, do you think it's easy to become a fitness professional in general? It depends. When you're talking about PTs, definitely. But when I got qualified, it took me a year to do my level three okay. alone. And now you can do level two and three combined online in three weeks. It doesn't really give you any understanding. Like if you haven't got a background in it, especially, it doesn't matter. What would you say was the hardest part of the job? The hardest part of the job was probably, if I was busy, and some, some days, I, when I was super busy, I would maybe even have 10 clients booked in <clears> one day. Okay. And then if I'm on my ninth, 10th client at the, at the end of the day and you try to stay motivated, that, that's pretty tough. So how do you keep yourself on your toes with the clients? Keep everything fresh. I, I, you know, I know everyone probably said this, but I was constantly learning, reading, mm -hmm. um, mimicking other coaches who I thought had the you know, shit together. And just probably, Probably by doing the job, you just get better at it, I think, just by actually physically doing the job over time. So I'd keep myself on my toes by trying to learn more. How did you market yourself as a PT? There wasn't many avenues to go down for that, really, when I was PT. And so mainly it was social media. The sort of clients I would get off the back of that would be quite flimsy. Want to know a million questions first. There's, there's so many clients who were potentially interested and it would be back and forth. Are you going to start? And then it'd be months later, two months later there. I don't know, it wasn't really the cleanest way of getting clients. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of people don't differentiate that Instagram pages as well. So you've got mm. oh, I'm a PT and then you've also got oh look at me in Zanti, which doesn't you, you know yeah. I don't know why people don't separate their business. Yeah, well. true. Uh, that's another thing that's I mean I, I think I sort of did I have like a hacked coaching page but yeah, it's not the best tool really social media. It's it's good for just you know, it's got its place but so, yeah. certainly with Facebook and everything like if that's the thing I sort of needed when I was a PT. Did you have a personal website? Uh, I did I did have a personal website um, and it cost me quite a bit of money as well. I, I used to pay about 40 quid a month and I sort of edited it all myself on Squarespace. Really? Bitbook's cheaper than that. <laughs> yeah, no, true. No, no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so hard not to be a cheesy bastard. It looked good. Realistically, I didn't get anywhere near enough traffic on the website. Yeah. So did you find that keeping up with your day to day and marketing yourself was quite a big task. I'm not very administrative uh, at all. Even replying to people is still tough. I mean, <laughs> still is in my <laughs> People rolling their eyes. Um, <laughs> no, I wasn't good at keeping on top of that stuff, to be honest. I, I tried my, it, it was a real conscious effort. The social media aspect and trying to speak to clients and stuff yeah. uh, can, can just be totally over. If you've got to, I'd imagine if you've got an eight hour, 10 hour day booking yeah. the gym and you've got Seven eight clients taking yeah. up all that time. There's not much time to do anything. By the time it gets yeah. to even doing that, you'd, I'd be mentally drained. Yeah, I'd anything. be running to the toilet. You remember? I sometimes had <laughs> coach you. I'd finish one person after yeah. run to the toilet, take a dump, like barely wipe my ass, <laughs> come train. It was. It's, it is kind of tiring. Yeah, so I didn't make much time for it. Okay. Now some of the more important questions: steak or cake? Um, steak. A bit like cheesecake, which is a cake. So surely it's cake, 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 cake on steak. But, uh, ooh. I don't know, I'd say, ste I'd say yeah, steak. steak fair, yeah, steak, fair play. So has a client ever requested to see your uh, certifications or your insurance before? No, nah, never. Not that I can remember at all. I don't know if anyone asked that. Um, so in that case, in what effect do you think that might have? On the industry. I think it paints a good picture of where we're at in the industry where the general public just probably doesn't know yeah. to ask that because if they do get injured, they do get hurt by someone who isn't qualified or insured, then you know it's, it's a bad situation for everyone. But the general consensus really isn't there. What was your, and maybe still is, your biggest bugbear in the industry? Firstly, I, I think this is probably a personal one of mine, but PTs who don't squat right themselves or do comp arm lift properly themselves or just any lift properly. Mm. I've seen an awful lot of it as well, which is the worrying part. 
for such a fundamental lift. Like the squash thing is a big thing. Yeah, hopefully they're not teaching that until well, they're the, able to lift off. Well they are though. I think the main thing is that if you're, should, if you're a PD you should be able to demonstrate a good example yeah. of the lift of any lift really. Well, I've known you a little bit personally so I know this may be a hard question because I really don't have many, mm -hmm. if any, funny stories. But do you have any funny stories as a PT? You can't use the old squatting and your pants explodes because everyone knows that one already. Everyone's been there. Yeah. I've oh, had it happen to me personally. Oh, yeah. It sounded like a bomb went off. Everyone panicked and <laughs> ran out of the room. I was PT. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember who I was PT and that is relevant. But someone fell doing box jumps. Okay. And it was really funny. Yeah, it is funny and when I people laughed, hurt myself, isn't it? And I laughed loudly <laughs> and everyone watched me laugh at someone falling over. Yeah, injuring myself. They really, right. really hurt Well, well I didn't ask your most sadistic PD <laughs> That was funny though. That was funny. Yeah. yeah, when that poor innocent person fell over and hurt herself yeah. in front of everybody. Yeah. Going back on your dietary advice mm. from before. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you only eat crisps? <laughs> I've got that. Seriously, a lot does happen because <laughs> I've only been eating crisps now for three weeks. I don't know. I'm not a nutritionist. I can't really. No, I can tell you, I'm heavily constipated. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Fitbook Meat with Thomas Hackett. <laughs>